That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about The Bay of Silence, which will be available on digital demand August 14th, 2020, courtesy of Vertical Entertainment. It is the latest film directed by uh, Paula van der Oost, uh, who's Dutch. Uh, it's based on a novel by Lisa St. Aubin de Terran, uh, who is uh, the daughter of the famous uh, novelist uh, Jan Carew. Uh, and, uh, yeah. The story is about a man named Will, played by Dracula. Claes Bang, uh, who I know from The Square, uh, Ruben Ostlund's The Square. Did I see The Square? No, but you should. It's very good. Okay. I know him from the Netflix series Dracula, mm -hmm. which I enjoyed. Sure. I know people maybe didn't, but I do. Anyway, so Will, uh, it revolves around Will and his wife. Uh, what's her name? Rosalind, played by Olga Kurilenko. The film opens with Will and Rosalind in the Bay of Silence, which is this beautiful coastal town in Italy. Mm -hmm. uh, they're out in the water. He proposes to her. She says yes in what uh, was one of the worst marriage proposal scenes I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we'll talk about that. Um, flash forward eight months and she is pregnant after mm -hmm. they've been married. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then flash forward six, six months and she they're at like a party. Or they're looking at a house where she falls. That's after the party. So she's like on the second floor of their home taking pictures and falls off the balcony. Oh wait, sorry, that's before the party because the fall uh, exacerbates her giving birth. That's what I'm trying to explain. Yeah. So um, they get married, she gets pregnant. Six months after she becomes pregnant, she has a fall which causes, uh, or which necessitates uh, inducing labor. The baby's fine. She's fine. After she returns home, she um, is sort of like she's having an episode, mm -hmm. like where she's, I mean, it's like an episode. She's like hearing things. She walks downstairs. There's she's a scene. Claw clawing at the wall. That we see in the trailer of her like clawing the wallpaper or the paint off the wall. Obviously, her husband's concerned, but he's not really sure what's going on. Mm -hmm. He comes home from work one day and she's gone. It's clear that she's just up and left. Mm -hmm. So she's taken her two twins who were like maybe eight or nine years old from a, from previous. a previous marriage relationship and then her newborn son with Will. So she's gone. He uh, panics. He call Instead of calling the police, he calls his Rosalind's ex or yeah, ex stepfather Mil played by Milton played by Brian Cox Milton. Um, contacts him because he's very involved in her life. Yes. Yeah, like very involved. <laughs> um, so he says, well, you know, like we'll find her. Something that was very confusing to me is how much time passes. Because the film goes to some length to show like, oh, eight months, six months. But then the time that she's been missing, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But he ends up looking for her. He finds some photos of her because he goes to Milton's home and sees like a beautiful portrait of her that was taken at Belle Rev. Belle Rev, which uh, is another coastal town. Uh, in Normandy, in France, yeah. In France. So he has the idea to go there. Maybe he'll find her. Well, she'd also received a package. She receives a package from there as well, yes. And that seems to have exacerbated the, uh, her, her flight. Her flight. So he goes to Belle Rev. He's searching around, like asking people, have you seen this woman? People are being kind of weird towards mm -hmm. him which obviously leads us to think like there's something going on, mm -hmm. but no one has seen her. So he's just walking down the coast when he sees his, like the two twin girls with a stroller, like just playing in the sand. Mm -hmm. So he's like, Oh my God, that, my, that are, that are presented as kind of, they become feral. <laughs> yeah. Which again, like how long have they been gone? Mm -hmm. But anyway, mm -hmm. he's like, Oh my God, you're here. Where's your mom? She's inside. They start saying some weird things. And they have a perambulator that's filled with like shells. And... Yeah. The stroller they're like playing around is filled with all this trash. So he's like, okay, well let me go get your mom. He runs towards the house, but then stops and thinks to look in the stroller. Mm -hmm. And when he does, he starts, you know, knocking out all the trash and he finds his son who dead. is dead. So he goes in the house to find his wife. She's in there like a wild animal, mm -hmm. um, clearly suffering from some severe emotional issues. Again, not calling the police, calls um, his ex-stepfather-in-law. Um, 
They end up taking her to the hospital, and that's when the truth is revealed to him, because Rosalind's mother, who's played by... Alice Kriege. Who I know from Gretel and Hansel. And Sleepwalkers. As the witch. And from Sleepwalkers. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I like her. Yeah, she's she's not well utilized in this film, but she's um, Rosalind's mom. She explains that she has these episodes mm -hmm. because she's schizophrenic. So that's news to Will. But prior to that, we see him like looking at um, some of her medication. He finds some Halperidol, which is some pretty strong like psychotropic medication. And he tells the mom, like, oh, I thought these were for her migraines. Like, he never thought to look up these drugs. I mean, it's modern times. He could have Googled what it was. But, um, yeah, he finds out she has severe mo emotional issues. She's schizophrenic. He then does some more research. Mm -hmm. Finds this art, like, this gallery and this man. And, like, he sort of finds out that his wife was the victim. Like, she like she maybe was molested at a young age because there are these compromising photos of her as an underage girl. Uh, I think Vivian, the mother, says she was, she was sexually assaulted as a teenager. So when he first went to Bell Rev to try to find her, he bumps into this younger man who's like the age of his wife. Because Pierre. Will is older than Rosalind. Um, Pierre. Pierre. And there's kind of a weird uh, situation with Pierre and Rosalind. Like she hugs him and he kind of acts like he doesn't know her because he told Will he didn't know her. Mm -hmm. But we find out that... Uh, uh, what's the young guy's name? Pierre. Pierre, he was convicted of raping her mm -hmm. because there was some weird situation when they were teenagers where she, they were out in the beach and she screamed for help because she's schizophrenic, I guess. And the police assumed that he assaulted her and she had shown signs of sexual assault, but that was from the person who was really assaulting her. So he explains that it wasn't him mm -hmm. and that it was Milton. Mm -hmm. So Milton, her ex-stepfather, was the one molesting her as a kid, taking those compromising photos of her. So Pierre and Will go to conf well, no, Will goes to confront Milton, and Milton's like, "I knew you were coming, gotcha." He has a gun. Like, like I'm not going out like this. I own her. But then Pierre shows up because right as like Milton's probably going to shoot Will, Pierre. Pierre shows up and uh, Rosalind. And Rosalind. Mm -hmm. So then we know the truth. So they leave. So Rosalind and Will leave the Milton's house. And then we hear that Pierre has, well, we assume Pierre has shot Milton. And then the next scene is Milton's dead body, like on the curb with all of the incriminating photos, like thrown around him. I thought we saw Brian Cox get shot. Do we? Yeah, I think we do. But not a fatal shot, because then we he, he's just like shot in the arm, maybe. Or the okay, hand. yeah. But anyway, he's killed. Uh, Milton's killed, and incriminating evidence is splayed around him, so we assume now everyone will know the truth. Mm -hmm. The final scene was ambiguous to me, but you explain it, because I think your explanation makes more sense. Uh, well, they, they do go back to uh, the Bay of Silence, and it's just the twins, obviously, and uh, Olga. And uh, the twins... There's... There's some repeated visuals. He's buried in the sand again because the twins have buried him there. And Olga Kirilenko paints a heart on him in the sand. And then he looks over at the bay and has a memory from the, the opening scene of the film where she's telling him to be quiet. We're in the Bay of Silence. And to me, that book ended with those moments. You thought it was a flashback. Yeah, that moment, I think, is a flashback. But I assumed it was them having moved forward. No, I think that's him sh like looking back on the joy at the beginning of the relationship um, as to what's happened now. Cause I think that makes more sense. Because the sky is dark on him while he's in the sand, and then in the flashback, the, it's at, the, at twilight okay. or whatever when they're... But that's the end. All right. So... Which I think is a metaphor for... Uh, the Bay of Silence, bear, being buried in the sand is not communicating, not questioning, not asking pertinent questions, maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we can get into that. I'll just go through my list. So, the marriage proposal in the beginning of the film. So, they're in the bay, and they're playing around. Will, Will and Rosalind. Will kind of, like, dives under the water mm -hmm. and then pretends like he's gone missing. Mm -hmm. So, Rosalind becomes hysterical. Like, mm -hmm. screaming his name, she thinks that maybe he's been pulled under or whatever, and then he pops up with a ring. 
and asks her to marry him. So while she's crying, like, because she was so upset thinking something happened to him, she says yes. Mm -hmm. Um, The, when Rosalind falls off the patio. The banister. The banister breaks and she falls off and then Wilk accompanies her to the hospital. Like, he's in the operating room. Yes. I thought yeah, that, I was, thought that weird. was a little bizarre too. Cause, and then like her vitals start going and they're like, you have to leave now. Yeah, you're in the way. It's like, what were you doing there in the first place? We're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to stabilize this bitch. Maybe um, Italy. So, you know, I find this movie mildly entertaining. So let me say this at first. I thought the story was very compelling. I imagine that this novel is quite... Yes. Um, Juicy. Ripping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as soon as I was finished, I thought, oh, this would make a great novel or series of books or like a mini series like on Netflix or Amazon. Because there are four separate stories. Mm-hmm. There's the story of a man marrying a woman who he doesn't know is like has severe mental health issues and how that could you know evolve. There's that. Then there's a story of a man whose children are taking his his wife and children are like missing Mm -hmm. and him attempting to find them then there's a story of pierre this man who was falsely convicted of raping a woman and how he sort of is vindicated Mm -hmm. and then there's a story of milton the stepfather who was molesting his stepdaughter and controlling her up until she's an adult and gets married Mm -hmm. so all four of those stories could have made for ex- like an excellent basis for like a thriller on their own. Yeah, I, I think that, that it's the major problem with it. The novel, they try to condense everything that's going into the novel in under 90 under minutes. Under 90 minutes. Which, which doesn't make sense. Uh, granted, for um, uh, audience paying attention to a thriller, 90 minutes would make sense, but this is clearly something that's a lot more complex. Oh, yes. And it, and it moves so quickly and there's so much packed in that I don't think the characters, particularly Rosalind and Will, are well developed. There's not, I don't think there's any there's any. Will is just flat. Yeah. I mean, when he's happy, he's flat. When he finds out, like, when he finds his son dead, he's flat. When he finds out his wife's schizophrenic, he's flat. Mm-hmm. There's just no room for him to, like, show any emotion. Rosalind is just, I mean... You know, I know crazy is not like a dismissive word, but my first note, like when we see her act up, was like, this bitch is crazy. They just made her crazy. Yes. Like like a very generic crazy. Well, and then I think uh, misused the uh, diagnosis of schizophrenia. Yes. Which was reminding me of, um, in suddenly last summer, uh, they keep talking about dementia precox. And the way that schizophrenic is used in this, uh, in these parameters makes it feel like an out like it's an outdated term yeah. like they don't nobody really researched the dsm about what her symptoms are i think um, i think it's important to note this was adapted by carolyn goodall uh, uh the lady with the monkeys no that's jane goodall oh. carolyn goodall is a, a british actress uh who's in the movie as well and it's the first time she's uh, written a screenplay which i find interesting oh. she plays clay spang's um colleague the lesbian yeah Oh, we don't know. Oh, no, we know she's a lesbian. Yeah, because he asked about her wife. I didn't mean to assume or project onto her. There is a... And we just saw her in that movie, White Squall, because we were that on Blu-ray. Oh, oh. She's the doctor on the boat. Well, moving along. So when they're having their, like... What was it? Like a... They had a party to celebrate the baby's birth. Yes. And there are all of these people at the party. And Uh, and I, I wrote down, who are all these damn people? Like, the film just doesn't explain anything. There is an important plot point that a young woman sort of, like, is flirting with Will named Becca. Mm -hmm. She's flirting with him. He's kind of like, you're being inappropriate. I don't want anything to do with you. She slides him her number, like, in his pocket and says, call me. We find out that that's the nanny's friend. So there's this big party of all these people. We don't understand who they are. And the nanny invited her friend. Um, And then she comes back in the, towards the end because... When Rosalind and the three kids go missing, the nanny's also missing. Mm-hmm. Candy. Who, who's this black woman named Candy. So the, they can't find the nanny. They're trying to call her. She's unanswering. So then, of course, they're thinking, well, maybe she's responsible for them missing. But ultimately, like, she Will gets in contact with, which is another note that I'll get to. Um, but yeah, like, just no explanation of who any of these people are. I, we watched the movie separately, and I, you watched it after me, and I had to have you like scan certain characters, because I couldn't tell if Milton was her father, stepfather. 
ex stepfather. Like I missed that. I missed her mom being like her mom. Vivian. Yeah, mm -hmm. I assumed it was the mom. It's just things happen so fast. Yes, and it reminded me of that bit in that Amanda Seal stand up. Like, what are we talking about now? Like yes. every scene was like I was being. <laughs> bounced somewhere else and I'm just like oh. when they're at the party with the baby in the garden and the baby's kind of sneezing and then because again they're trying to make Rosalind seem crazy so like uh, someone's holding flowers like not even on the oh baby, yes yeah. just holding flowers she's like oh get them away I think it's the flowers that are making the baby sneeze and it's like bitch you're in a garden like mm -hmm. you're fully in like a garden mm -hmm. covered with flowers and like <laughs> but you think this rando holding flowers uh, <laughs> yeah um what else do I have here Oh, when um, Milton, when Milton first comes over after mm -hmm. Will says, like, you know, Rosalind's missing, Milton, I wrote this down, Milton goes like, um, what did you do? Mm -hmm. But then after he's explained I didn't do anything, he says, well, she's not well. So it's like, if you know this bitch is crazy, why are you making Will... I figured it's because the Milton character, the, the, the stepfather, wants to, like, sort of manipulate everything. Mm -hmm. Which, so that's yeah. why he's not telling Will. But it was just so frustrating. Like, okay, clearly this woman has issues. Like, I didn't do anything. Like, she just ran off with my children. Um, oh, the two little girls. Oh, yeah, they were. They make them, like you said, look feral. I, I thought that, you know, working with children is difficult, but I thought their acting was... And there's also a subplot about twins because she's already had twins and when she has, uh, you know, she falls, uh, th there's trauma surrounding this, the birth of the baby. Right. She uh, was convinced she was pregnant with twins and that one of them has died and they've lied to her. Yeah. Like, okay, so add more to the pile. <laughs> uh, and, and also when he does go back to Belle Rev and discovers her, she falls down the stairs and then she like snaps out of it and she's like, oh, Will, Will's here. And it's like, I don't think that's how schizophrenia works. When Will um, found his his son dead in the stroller, I wrote down in all caps, like, this baby is dead in the stroller. Oh, did, uh, did you mention in the rundown? So he buries the baby. He buries the baby. That's my next room. note. Okay. He buries the baby in Bell Rev, like, on the, like, in the, um, the, I just learned this term, so I'm going to use it, the swash zone. Like, mm -hmm. the area, like, right where it, like, stays wet from the, the, mm -hmm. the water, like, the beach tide. He just buries the baby there. In this wet sand. Like, obviously, after, like, a couple washes, this baby's going to fall back up. He buried the baby there, but then the the, the dramatic um, catalysts that keep the story moving are about how the baby He died. wants to know how the baby died. Like, because he's like, I need to find out how the baby died. Then why'd you bury like, the baby? You should have taken the baby to the, like, the uh, medical exam. Oh, another line of dialogue is a couple scenes before, because... Um, he finds her tearing up the walls and does not seem alarmed um, and then goes to talk to Milton about her and then he goes back to Rosalind to say, talk to, say I talked to Milton about you and she goes, you should talk to me when it's about me. <laughs> Same, actually. <laughs> um, then he tells, so he buries the baby. I just thought that was such a bold move because then it's also like, so you think that your two little twin daughters, because they know they know he buried the baby. It's like, so you think these two little eight-year-old badass girls are not going to, like, spill your tea and tell everyone you buried the dead baby? And everybody's trying to get Will not to go to the police now because even though he buried the baby, uh, Rosalind will get uh, blamed for it and go to jail and then there'll be no one to take care of the twins. I thought um, Pierre looked like Russell Brand. Oh yeah, he's better looking. Uh, he is. Well, so then, and then the Pierre thing, because it, it opens in a, the the flashback that is repeated because of Pierre, uh, where it's uh, Rosalind as a girl. I think it's in black and white, and that scream that we come to learn has forced him to be locked up for rape. And it's like he shows up out of nowhere, uh, following um, Will around, and then his line of dialogue is he corners him in a dark alley, and he, he says, "I just want to help you." Really? Why? The, and then at that point, I think there's like 15 minutes left of the narrative. Yes. Yeah. Just. Um, um, when Will finds out his wife's schizophrenic, his reaction is like, he's surprised. I mean, he's flat, but he's like, what? And it's like, she exhibited a lot of signs that show that her mental health is um, uh, like in question. Well, and he took it. He was angry with Vivian and the Alice Creech character. Yeah. But um, what else? Oh. I didn't mention this to you, but did you notice when he was nude, Will? Yeah. 
let me tell you something. I'm not body shaming anyone. And just because I'm blessed doesn't mean that, you know, I'm making fun of this man. But Will, uh, this, what's his actor's name? Clay Spang. <sighs> There's a scene, I don't understand why we need to see him naked. It serves no purpose in the story. But he's in the bathtub or preparing a bath. And he gets out of the bath and you see him, like you see his penis, but his pubic mound is so full of hair. I've never seen a person with that much pubic hair. And then his penis is tiny, it's like, like, like below average size. And it's buried in this mound of pubic hair. And I'm like, I hope I can find an image. Well, I probably can't post it. But anyway, it's like he has a micro penis. I don't know why this actor allowed them to do him like that. I don't either. I did Unless think that was curious. You know what? Maybe he's advocating for micro penises. No, and it's, you know, there are people with very small penises and we shouldn't shame them. But I think like, like I was just very shocked. Like you don't normally see male actors. That, that's true. That's very Letting true. themselves be exposed that way. And certainly not someone whose penis is super tiny. So he's very brave. I did. I do vividly <laughs> remember that scene. And I, I think I just was like, well. I, I wrote down like, whoa. <laughs> uh, yes. No, that's true. Um, um, yeah. Uh, so, the, yes, it, it feels like the, what I, my takeaway from the film was I thought this could have been done in 90 minutes with what, how it stands, but it should, they need to cut out characters. At the point where he, he's having to track down Candy, he finds her, and then she's trying to put him in a compromising position with Becca so that when she tells him the truth, yes. and she has all this footage that she took of... Uh, Olga Kirilenko, who's having a mental breakdown in this dilapidated house that doesn't have any running. Um, we need to keep going on that because I thought that was insane. That so, was, so what you're saying is the nanny, you know, because the whole thing is like, where's this black nanny? Mm -hmm. And then she was afraid that they would think it's her, but she has all this footage yeah, proving she, that the mom was crazy, and she has footage showing that the baby, like they walked in, the baby was dead. Yeah. So you mean to tell me that your black ass went into hiding, which only makes you look more guilty when you had proof that it wasn't you. Also, let me tell you something. If I were the nanny, the minute that bitch started acting crazy. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, there, I, I, oh, I would have stayed long enough to let her know that I was leaving. There, there's, <laughs> there's a lot that doesn't make sense. And again, as you said, it, there's no time for any real characterization. So I think if you had cut out, if they had cut out parts of this that don't make sense for their limited running. Well, nanny, the, the nanny and Becca. The nanny and Becca don't, uh, Carolyn Goodall herself is the co-worker. I don't yeah. think, you don't even really need that. That Because they're trying to establish that Will's under a lot of pressure at work, but it's like, well, obviously you're a career person, like you have money, like we, we already know that you're probably preoccupied mm -hmm. with work. Yeah, there were there are a lot of simpler ways to show that. Yes. So it, it, I think this film is an interesting exercise in adaptation and having to let some things go uh, from the novel. One good line or one good scene is when Rosalind tells Will because the whole thing about because she's concerned like well if my baby's dead and what are people going to think and they're asking me and he's like don't worry everyone knows that the police know it was a car accident and at one point she goes if I was in a car accident then how come you still have your car mm -hmm. I thought that was really good actually yes um, another fun campy line is when he when Will has the case of like her photos and then they're like, and then Milton comes in and they're like, how'd you get it? Blah, blah, blah. And, and Rosalind wants to see the case. And they're like, no, I don't think you should see it until you're better. And Rosalind goes, I am fucking better, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor, poor Olga. Because I think she's a, a fine enough actress. It just, they were really operating on cliche. Um, Talking about like just this film packing too much in too quickly. It's so easy to miss things. A plot point is the ring that Milton's wearing. His signet ring, yeah. His, well, I don't know what that is, but I'll say it. Signet ring. And we, the only reason we know that it's Milton, because they don't show Milton, like, molesting the Rosalind or taking the photos. The only reason we know it's him is because the person doing it is wearing the same ring. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, man, if you would have blinked for two seconds, you wouldn't have even, like... I mean, you could put it together knowing that like they kill him, so obviously he was guilty. But it's just yeah, like when you pack so much shit in there, it's like you can't. There's no room to there, breathe. There's no room to breathe. And it's just it left uh, thinking about all the other things. Like I thought of uh, that's what Ava Ionesco's mother did to her, taking nude pictures of her as a child. 
Oh. <laughs> That's where my mind was going in this. Well, all I have to say is this film was amusing, and I would recommend watching it, you know, maybe with people, maybe with, like, a few glasses of wine. Yeah, I agree. I think with people would make it better. Yeah. Um, the, the poster art quickly um, reminds me of uh, early 90s Martin Sheen movie called When the Bow Breaks. Uh, oh. When the Bow Breaks. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it's Bow. Bow Breaks. Uh, Paula van der Oost, who uh, is a notable Dutch film director, she, uh, her 2001 film Zeus and Zoe was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, and that is a film I would recommend watching um, about a gay brother who has a fake marriage so he can inherit the family property from his instead of his three sisters. Um, and also her 2011 film Black Butterfly, starring Carice van Houten of Game of Thrones, who won Best Actress at Tribeca that year for that performance. Okay. What would you give this film? I think two out of five is fair. I would give it two out of five. But I do think it's entertaining. It is entertaining. So you can check it out if it's free somewhere. <laughs> Alright, bye. Bye.